Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come, your will be done here as in heaven. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come, your will be done here as in heaven. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Your name is healing. Your name is power. Your name is holy. My strong, strong tower. Your name is healing. Your name is power. Your name is holy. My strong, strong tower. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Good morning, good morning, Kingdom Citizens. How are you all doing? I pray and hope that you woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul. And that you're ready to conquer and be victorious in this day in Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading, where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Zechariah 9, 10, and 11, and then Revelation 20. Hi, I'm looking a little rough this morning. It's so super cold, and it's really, really, really taking a toll on me. (laughs) Very super cold. I know in other places, it's even colder than here. Uh, people have been posting snow and all kinds of, oh, I'm like, Lord, help me, help me, Jesus, get through this. <laughs> I do not see how people like this cold, but hey, we're going to, I'm going to get through it, right? We're going to get through it. Y'all pray for me. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, Jehovah God, creator of heaven and earth, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you are doing and ordering our steps and and getting us on our way. I pray for all of those that are connected to me, Lord God. I pray for the the people of God, the the family, Lord, the bride, the body of Christ. And I pray that you heal, mend, and restore, rejuvenate, revive, Lord God. We We need you in every way, in every form. We need you, Lord God. We need more and more of you. You are our assurance, Lord Jesus. You are our strong tower. You are the pillar in our life, Lord God. You are our Father, our Savior, our Lord, our physician, and we need you more ever than we ever have in our entire lives, Lord God. And so we just glorify you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are a God that keeps promises, that you answer prayers, that you hear us, Lord God, that you are hearing us and that you're working on our behalf every single day, making ways out of no way, Lord God. And we just glorify you and we give you all thanks, honor, and praise. And we pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Glory, glory, glory to God. Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. 
Yes, it does still look like I'm trying to wake up. <laughs> All right, so if you are just coming on, good morning. This is a year in the Bible. We are in Zechariah 9, 10, and 11. And then we'll read Revelation 20. And don't forget to engage and interact and make comments as we are reading the words of God. All right, Zechariah 9. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord in the land of Hadrach and Damascus shall be the rest thereof. When the eyes of man as of all the tribes of Israel shall be toward the Lord. And Hamath also shall border thereby. Tyrus and Zidon, though it be very wise, and Tyrus did build herself a stronghold and heaped up silver as the dust and fine gold as the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will cast her out and he will smite her power in the sea, and she shall be devoured with fire. Excuse me. Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza also shall see it and be very sorrowful. And Ekron, for her expectation, shall be ashamed. And the king shall perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon shall not be inhabited. And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, and I will take away his blood out of his mouth, and his abominations from between his teeth. But he that remaineth, even he, shall be for our God. And he shall be as a governor in Judah, and Ekron as a Jebusite. And I will encamp about mine house because of the army because of him that passes by and because of him that returneth and no oppressor shall pass through them any more for now have I seen with mine eyes rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem behold thy king cometh unto thee he is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat the foal of an ass and I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow, sh bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Now, I know verses 9 through 10 is, is, is speaking of Jesus Christ, is the prophecy. The prophecy of Jesus Christ. All right, so verse 11, As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons. O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. And they shall be filled like bowls as the corners of the altar. 
And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful, and new wine the maids. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at some of my commentary. Okay, so some of my commentary says these five cities of Philistia represented the arch enemy of the Israelites in the days of the mon monarchy. Removing blood and abominations suggests judgment that was also an act of cleansing bringing the people into conformity with God's law, announcing that their remnants shall be for our God, is a striking reversal, an extraordinary measure of divine compassion granted to enemies. The preceding verses denote the conqueror's movement from north to south, eventually arriving in Jerusalem, the path followed by Alexander the Great, some see the statement that no oppressor shall pass through them anymore as fulfilled when Alexander spared Jerusalem, but the city's subsequent destruction by the Romans in A.D. 70 suggests that it is better to understand the statement as poetic language for God's general protection. So a lot of this a lot of this stuff that is going on in Zechariah you could probably you could probably go back and look like you know the Roman Empire and and all those things in history uh that was that was going on uh is is described you know cuz you know, of course you know um as 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 things unfolded you know, people began to write what happens, the wars, the different wars that that are happening, um, especially in Jerusalem, uh, between Jerusalem, um, the Roman Empire, all those things are all written in history. And so what we're reading in the word that was already prophesying of all the things that will happen we can go back in history and actually read the unfolding of it all you know and I'm sure I'm sure throughout history you know uh, the history books or you know things like that I'm sure there's a lot of things that they left out that they didn't put in there but it's, it's just like you know with the Bible God didn't put everything in it he didn't put everything there, but uh, we could probably go back in history and read about some of this stuff that the Bible, you know, prophesies about. Because there's a lot, there's a lot going on here. I reading the Bible, I have a, a, a newfound interest in history. I, I I I didn't get history uh growing up in school. I didn't get it so I, I barely passed it. I was a C student <laughs> when it came to history. I didn't understand, you know I didn't understand why I would want to know anything about something that I wasn't even a part of, you know. I, I didn't get it. But now I do. I, I have a, a newfound, you know, interest. All right. So Zechariah 10. Okay. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. 
For the idols have spoken vanity, and the div diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain, therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight, because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, and gather them out of Azria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up, and the pride of Asriel shall be brought down, and the sceptre of Egypt shall depart away, and I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. Excuse me. All right, so some of my commentary says with the lack of leadership referred to as shepherds, probably des des destinating the leaders of the community, the Israelites have been turning to false sources of blessings. Zechariah rebuked them, instructing them to ask the Lord for rain instead of appealing to household deities idols and false prophets diviners which was forbidden in the law inept and misguided leadership was a common concern of the prophets Conversing, conversely with God visited his flock they became goodly and mighty or as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land such images are designed to invoke evoke Desire among readers to be empowered in similar ways. Corner can be a metaphor for leader. It is used for Jesus in the New Testament. So we're seeing a lot of uh, prophecy of Jesus Christ uh, coming. We're seeing a lot of um in, in Zechariah, Zechariah has been given a lot of um, prophecy of, of you know Jesus Christ. So when they when they go back and they read, you know, because they 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 read all this all the way up until Jesus, they would read they would read um, the laws of Moses in the synagogues all the time. So that 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 was a repeated thing that they would do. And so they would they would they knew about the prophecy. They knew about the prophecy of of Jesus coming because they would read this in the church in the church houses in the synagogues is what they were called. They would read this over and over. 
uh, in front of, you know, all the time. Any comments so far? Any comments? You know I'm going to ask. This book... Oh, excuse me. This book is a little bit more harder to understand for me. Um, because Zachariah is giving... Is being given a lot of different visions and, and different prophecies and and um he's he's seeing a lot of visions and and things and so uh the wording is even kind of different for me so that's why I'm reading the commentary a lot because um this particular connection the internet has been tripping lately all right, so uh, good morning if you are just coming on. You said we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, the, the understanding of Zachariah is uh, uh, a little bit harder for me. So thank God for commentaries, right? All right, so Zechariah 11. All right, it says, Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty are spoiled. Howl, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus said the Lord my God, Feed the flock of the slaughter, whose possessors slay them. And hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand. And into the hand of his king, and they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two stabs, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Then said I, I will not feed you that that dieth, let it die. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I had made with all the people. And it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And I said unto them, If ye think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I may break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Okay, so my, so my comment, commentary says, Some commentators think this poem 
an imaginary portrayal of the humbling of the forest of Lebanon belongs with the preceding chapter as a continuation of judgment on Israel's enemies, but it more likely introduces the judgment and humbling of Israel's leaders in chapter 11. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, may be a symbolic reverence to the temple and its gates. Timbers from Lebanon were used in the building of the temple. When suggests that the leaders in view is that of the religious authorities, thus the emphasis on the temple in earlier chapter continues. All right, so the shepherd named one of his staffs beauty and the other bands. So beauty means, I guess, for or grace and the other bands or unity. The former, the former symbolizing the covenant and later representing reunited Israel. But the failure of the shepherds to be good leaders resulted in letting the people self-destruct. The three shepherds probably do not refer to anyone in particular. The 30 pieces of silver may be an allusion to the value of a slave. Throwing the goodly price to the potter in the temple was an act of desecration. Matthew used some of this wording in reference to Judah in Matthew 27, 9 through 10, though stating that it was Jeremiah's prophecy that was fulfilled. Huh. Okay. So, that's that. All right, so verse 15. So, where did I stop? Okay, I stopped at verse 15. All right, so, and the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall the young neither shall seek the young one nor heal that that is broken nor feed that that standeth still but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened I had to pause there and read some of the commentary. Like I said, the word, the wordings and the way this is written, um, it's, it's really, it's really, um, you have to really go back and, and look up words and, and study it to really, really get a true understanding of what is going on here. I, I, the only thing I can really, really see is God is still, um, God is still putting out punishments and judgments, um, because they are still, they are still refusing to, um, they are still refusing to, you know, obey or listen to him or, uh, they're still, um, there still need to be some punishment going on. That's what I'm I, I'm I'm seeing. Does anyone else understand Zechariah? Anyone else, especially uh, chapters nine, ten, and eleven? Anyone else getting an understanding of you know uh, what's happening here? <laughs> So this is one of those moments where you can see that, you know, there's a lot that I'm still learning. And uh, especially, especially um, 
the way some of the prophecies are being written. So anyone else, anyone else have any, any, any kind of understanding of chapters 9 through 11? I read some of the commentaries. Um, I still feel like that, that those chapters, I'm going to have to go back and, and read again. But of course, we're going to come across, we're going to come across Zechariah again for sure. When we are reading the words of God every single day. And like I said, every time you read the word of God and you read it again, you get a new level of understanding. Um, you get a, a new level of, of knowledge and wisdom. And so we, this, this, this is one of the reasons we do this every single day. We just come on, we read, we read the words of God and we allow the Holy Spirit to come in and teach and and every time you read it every time you go back over it and you read it again and you meditate and you even look up words and study it you'll get new levels of understanding each and every time and so yes we will be reading that again eventually All right, so Revelation 20. Whew. I'm covering my face because these yawns, I ha I guess I have my winter yawns and my, my, my summer yawns. <laughs> the winter yawns are much horrifying looking like my face. <laughs> They're much stronger. All right, so good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in the book of Revelation uh, 20, chapter 20. Um, we just got through reading Zechariah 9, 10, and 11. And I wasn't, I, I didn't have much to say about Zechariah 9, 10, and 11 because my level of understanding of what, what was just read is not quite there yet for Zachariah. <laughs> I'm still trying to understand Zachariah. All right. So Revelation 20. Says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshiped the beast neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, 
Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works." And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So John is John is getting to see all the way to the end. John is John is uh, is being allowed to see the judgments he's able he's he's being allowed to see and then he's allowed to write it he's allowed to write what he sees and so it's like god is preparing his people even to know what happens all the way to the end so we're talk you know of course people talk about and they call it the rapture they call it the rapture when Jesus Christ comes and it says we will see him. All eyes will see him come out of the clouds. We will see him come and, and he's going to gather. The dead will rise and, and, and the ones living, we will all be gathered together. And, and, and a lot of a lot of the stuff that's that's going to happen will happen after the saints are, are taken up and then when we read when we read the other day about him coming back on a horse it's like uh and it said a lot of the saints are going to come back with him and you can see them riding on horses uh because there's there's a great battle a great battle that's going to happen and so the enemy uh, the enemy gathers all the people that remain he deceives them and all the ones that takes the mark of the beast and things like that are going to literally gear up and arm up to fight Jesus and his saints so it's like the Lord you know God is letting John see everything all the way and even after the battle, when the battle is over and, and everything, he's he's getting he's getting the whole download of everything that is going to happen. And so this this is also this is also hope for for the people for people of God. Because we we can we can you know uh rest assured that as long as our name is written in the lamb's book of life you know no harm is going to come to those whose names are written in that book in the lamb's book of life it also wants to give you strength and and, and encouragement uh, to not be one that accepts the mark of the beast. 
So there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening that paves the way of certain events, certain events that has to happen, things like that. And so we have we are learning to lean on the words of God and to know that whatever whatever we see, whatever whatever is happening in the world, we do not have to be afraid. We can come and lean on the words of God and, and know don't respond the way the world responds. Don't react and don't and make sure that no matter what, you seek the counsel of the Lord. Because there are things that are going to be happening, even with this election. All these every all these things that are happening right now is like paving the way for this prophecy. The prophecy, the book of Revelation, the coming of the Lord, everything, everything that goes on, everything that's happening in the world, every even even with us. Every, everything that's happening with the people of God, you know, the blessings and the favor that are coming, us being able to buy land, us being able to go out there and build, us being able to 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 grow and, and things like that. He's girding us up. He's preparing us. And, and, and we're we are becoming like true soldiers in Christ Jesus. And, and every everything that's even happening in our lives is all paving a way for the prophecy of revelation uh, for the coming of the Lord. And so he's preparing us. He's he's girding us up. He's giving us the energy and the strength. Because just like just like it said. Woo. A moth. <laughs> Just like you said, um, there are people who are going to be martyrs, and that means that they will be the. Just like he saw those who will be beheaded in Jesus Christ, like it's it's it will get bad. It will get bad, but. It's all, all for the glory of the Lord, you know. It's all for the glory of the Lord. And that, that, that glorious, glorious day of the coming of the Lord is, you know, is something that I look forward to, you know. I was even just telling my husband the other day, like, um, I was telling my husband the other day because I came across, I came across something where, uh, and, and I'm talking about different events that are happening. And so I, I, I don't watch the news. I don't watch the news. I don't keep up with political things. I don't do any of that. But once in a while, God allows certain information to come across my eyes and and I and I see it and they're 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 having to pass a law for people to not discriminate. Uh, how do I, I how do I put it? They're having that they, they 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 put they put out. A law and it's only been passed in like 10 states or something or whatever but it's at the federal level where you cannot discriminate against natural hair because a lot of people uh, kids have been getting kicked out of school because of dreadlocks or or uh, us being able to wear our natural hair like this all puffy and things like that 
And so they, they came up with a law to where people will not be able to discriminate against the way we wear our hair naturally. And when I saw that, I said, Lord, like God, <laughs> and I, I went and told my husband, I said, it is really time for us to go home for real. And my, and my husband said, when, when God is ready for us to go home, then that's when it's time for us to go home. I was like, the fact that they have to pass a law, like people are really, really discriminating. So because, because, because they, because the enemy is not winning that fight when it comes to our skin color, now there are people out there really actually discriminating against the hair, the crown of our head. So it's like there are going to be events, things like that, that will happen. But we are to keep our eyes focused on Jesus because stuff like that can 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 distract you stuff, you know. Uh, things like that can distract you. But God has people in place. Like I said, they've they've came up with a law for for so people can't discriminate against our hair. So God have people in place to be the ones to advocate for those certain things, certain arenas. So you want to keep your eyes focused on the Lord and stay in the word because there are going to be events like that, things like that, that are going to be happening, especially in this next coming year, 2021 and then 2022. There are going to be events and things that are happening um, that will try to distract you and and you don't want to get distracted so rest assured and know that God have people in place he's positioning people he's positioning his people in the political arena he's positioning people in the church house arena he's he's positioning people in certain areas to where they already know what to do, how to respond, and and everything. So, all I can say is, get ready, be ready, and stay ready. Amen. Because when when you come across those, when you come across the news feed, or or certain deaths happen, or you know uh, things that are happening. Uh, you're, you're going to get an automatic human response but make sure you pause stop and seek the Lord first before you act on anything before you make any types of any decisions seek the Lord first and foremost and say okay Lord what is my position in this? What should I do? How should I respond? You know, what steps do I take concerning whatever it is? You know, stay focused on Jesus and let him guide you. Let him direct you. No matter what. And this is this is this is going to be very, very, very important in the next coming year, 2021. Stay focused on Jesus. And and I heard that in the spirit. I heard that in the spirit as I was as I was, you know, waking up this morning, I was hearing that in the spirit to stay focused on Jesus. Stay focused. Like there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things going on. 
and, 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 and things that are going to be revealed. There's a lot of revealings, revelation, you know, all kinds of things that, that are going to happen. All right. Any other comments? Any comments? If you are just coming on, this is a reading of the word. That means go back and study it. But we read Zechariah 9, 10, and 11. And then Revelation 20 this morning. So like I said, this is the reading. That means you got to take the time to go back and study it. Break words down. Really meditate in the Lord. And, and truly seek his counsel. Especially when it comes to the book of Revelation. You know, because he's revealing a lot of what is happening and what is going to happen, you know? So, all right. Any, any comments, any comments at all? I know, I know I say a lot, but you know, um, when you read the words of God, it, it kind of stirs up some stuff in your spirit. And so, but it's all good, right? <laughs> I just love to talk now. If y'all don't know my testimony, I was a very, very, very shy girl growing up. And I barely started barely started coming out of my shell in my high school years. I really didn't start coming out of my shell. I may have, God may have was able to pull off a layer <laughs> in high school. And then after high school, he may was able to pull off another layer. But by the time I got to my thirties, a couple of layers was pulled off. And I began to actually start really speaking and, and talking. So now I'm 47 and I love to talk now. I really do. I do love to talk. Uh, if anybody have ever got on the phone with me, like I, there's conversations that last three hours if you get on the phone with me because <laughs> I I will talk for sure but I I like that I like this me now you know who I am now that that shy girl was so timid and you know when I when I look back at her it makes me really want to pray for her <laughs> you know it makes me really want to pray for her because you know, she was that girl that people ran over so easily. People saw the goodness in her and and ran over her and 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 you know they were just out to steal, kill, and destroy, you know. So I liked I like the person who God is making me to be, and I know he's not finished, you know. I know he is not finished yet. So we don't know what I'll be like coming up in the next year, especially after have reading the whole Bible in one entire year, like every single word. And then we do it again. So I'm ready for I'm ready for new levels in Christ. You know, I'm ready to be elevated. I'm ready to to move up in the ranks <laughs> amen all right so there i go talking again oh i told you my yawns are ugly uh in the winter time but anyway i love you love you all i really really do and uh i hope that you all have a wonderful awesome beautiful blessed day on purpose and I will see you 5 30 in the morning